Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Watcher of Realms. For today's video, I want to do a little short video here analyzing the fighters. This legendary fighter bundle popped up into the shop, so is it worth it? The finest blood for the most untainted soul. All right, so I just noticed this. I think it just popped with reset today, and I was really surprised by it. Um, I haven't seen this yet, but it's a really fun idea. It's really cool if you know your account is just lacking fighters. This is something like maybe someone early on could really benefit from because fighters are huge. They can stall a ground lane, you know, to stop the enemies from coming and kill them at the same time. You can use them in, instead of defenders sometimes as well, which is really, really cool. And I feel like early on, fighters are really, really important. And of course, they still are important late game as well. But I remember when I first was watching Mabucket when the game launched at Global, he really stressed how important fighters are as a class. And I certainly still agree. So I wanted to do a quick look through the fighters talk about is it worth buying this bundle so i have to say it's 50 dollars for a hero that's plus more which honestly it's it's kind of it feels a little expensive i wish it was more like 30 dollars plus a hero but at the end of the day we get 2000 diamonds as well so the 2000 diamonds is more than two 10 poles so that's like buying 20 summons as it is so once you take away the 20 summons this gets this down to like a $30 value, and this is just a bonus, right? So at the end of the day, I really think this is a solid value, like how I would pay $30 for these cards, but I don't personally don't want to pay $50. But if they come with good stuff, it makes it more worth it. This is nice because it just instantly promotes them as well, so that's really fun to be able to quickly upgrade someone. And I believe it counts the same for the hero training events, so really nice to not have to grind out some promotions if you're behind to just instantly max out the character you just bought so who is here who's worth it who's not worth it let's take a look and we're also going to use a fun reference tool let's break out fastidious's website all right so on my well in all my video descriptions now i do link fastidious's website for tier lists. And that's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at the fighters and we're only going to look at legendary. We're going to go through kind of his order. Um, I guess the let's sort by overall and see if number one, see if we agree and talk about where these heroes are good and the worst of the heroes. Um, are they on this banner? Yeah, uh, yes or no. And are they worth risking paying $50 for? Because, uh, you know, the reality is you could open up that special card hope you get an arrogance and instead you could get um oops it doesn't stay sorted when i go back of course instead you could get a absent so which is alpha it's an alphabetical i think go figure all right anyway so is is it worth risking getting an absent is he good enough in any areas let's talk about that sort of thing right now so overall this card includes everyone that's in the normal hero pools, right? So this is Araka as a lord, which is awesome, honestly. No complaints there. The chance to get her is definitely great. Although, of course, we have Ayavar now, who's just so much better as a lord uh, with his bonus and as a damage dealer himself. So poor Araka is now going to be downgraded in, I guess, ranking dramatically in value because he's just so much more interesting for Araka but I still love her I got her and I'm happy to have her at least instead of one of the epics but all right we have Abomination who we can forge for free that would suck to get that one not gonna lie that's probably the worst pull out of this if you pay $50 and you get a hero that you can fuse for free that would suck Arrogance Cerberus is also a chaotic faction but he is part of the normal pool as a a cultist as well. We have Epson, Kaneza, Magmus is one of our newer fighters, Salazar, an OG, Valeria, who's also chaotic, Velcra, who's also um, Arbiter, and of course, Zilla too. 
So these are who you can get. So just to be very clear, even though this picture shows uh, only four heroes on it, that uh, this is what you actually can get. Always, always click and see the details before you buy these packs, guys, because I know some people were really disappointed from some of the previous ones because they thought they could only get the ones that were showing in the advertisement. But, all right, so we're on Fastidious's website. Let's take a look here. So I would certainly agree, out of all the ones we can get, I would absolutely agree that um, Arrogance is the top tier overall because he's so versatile in literally everything. Okay, as we saw here, Gear Raid 4, um, which, which is the Gear Dungeon 1. Meh, you're not going to use him there. Um, you're not going to use many fighters there, so except for Valkyra because of how good her AoE is. So that's obvious. But look at his rankings across the board. I absolutely agree. Everywhere he's great. Guild boss, even Gear Raid 1, uh, Gear Raid 2, of course, Gear Raid 3, sure, he could be in the front. AMR, Amazing, Voidrift, Shore, Campaign, Faction Trials, and the Codexes. So don't forget about the Codexes as well. So we have the Conqueror Codex, or the sorry, the Styx Codex, Conqueror, Arbiter, and then you have Guild War content. He's amazing with, with the Nightmare teams in Guild War. So really, really cool. And of course, you see him in Arena. So I this is definitely the top tier option for me. We cannot get lost. Uh, Valeria we can get. And you know Valeria is very strong. She's definitely strong in um, yeah, almost every area that you need a fighter as well. But at the end of the day, um, I think I'd still be more happy getting Arrogance. So yeah, I really like this list. She, uh, He did a really good tier list. Um, I know he had collaborations as well. So I feel like you could pretty well trust this tier list, guys. But of course, if you just like a hero because you found a fun use for them, and just because Fastidious's website or anybody's website says it's bad, doesn't mean you shouldn't use it. You use what you want, and maybe you're that person that comes up with an idea for someone that no one's thought of yet. Or like how Shamir can be amazing when built a very specific way. It doesn't mean he's the worst hero in the game, because he's amazing in a very niche thing. Stuff like that, don't forget to kind of make your own judgment at the end of the day. If you can be creative, go with it. All right, so let's look at the other fighters. So we have Velcra Zillatu also at S plus with his overall tier. Definitely the case. Velcra has been one of my favorite heroes since day one. I absolutely love her. She has been a favorite of mine. And I think it should be obvious why. And now she's getting amazing use in the new content. With the gear dungeons, um, of course we could use her in the codex as well. I don't think the new guild boss. Let's see, what did he did he put the rankings for the new guild boss in here? Oh no, not yet, right? Not the new guild boss because we barely touched it, right? Yeah, we barely touched the the uh, new guild boss. So let's the tight the Titanic event. Um, yeah, but I absolutely love Valkra. Zilla 2 is amazing for guild boss, but she's no longer the only like top tier crazy damage option. Now we have Hex. Uh, we have Silas when paired with Araka. We have, um, honestly, even Ayavar can do the damage she can do. It's kind of crazy though, some of the damage you can see. Solkadens can do crazy damage and pair up with her as well. He does take away from her total damage, but yeah. I think Zillatu is a little weaker in some other content. As you can see, he puts some B pluses here. But that's okay. You don't need someone in every area to be good in every area of the game. They can't all be as good as and versatile as Arrogance. So, fair enough. Now, Araka is a lord. At the end of the day, if you get a lord from that, you can't be mad. She's great, but she doesn't do crazy damage herself. So keep that in mind that she's not like a top tier damage dealer, but that is it. Uh, actually, let's go through and read the little blurbs really quick that he put. I love this kind of thing. I love that Mabucket used to have little summaries. So let's read those. Arrogance is a ranged fighter who makes others look bad, although primarily single target. He has a chance of hitting multiple enemies, and his ultimate can be powerful against a ranged AoE, allowing him to decimate groups. And once the Lust Bond is obtained, his ult is hard to compete with. He also hits flyers, making him great anti-air. If you need a ranged fighter, this guy is hard to beat. 
and he does have great range. You can see here the ultimate range, the basic attack range, and the ultimate range. I love that his website includes that as well. Because sometimes it's hard to see that when you're trying to analyze your characters while playing in game. They don't make it as easy as they used to to see that. All right. So next up, we have Valeria in the list. A powerful damage dealer also applies physical vulnerability that has some crazy bursts with her ultimate. Valeria is a typical chaotic unit, so she can often be hard to keep alive, but at a low health or against a single target, that big old blade shines. She really is a powerful damage dealer, but if you're not careful, she'll end up dead. Very true. A lot of the chaotic faction heroes sacrifice their HP or thrive when they have low HP, so it's something to consider when playing. All right, Velcra, my girl here. Uh, with good range, solid AoE attack, and an ally revival, Velcra is never a bad choice. She also provides a constant source of magic vulnerability, and her ult is built to benefit greatly from northerner shields with an extended range, damage boost, and ability to hit flyers that makes her amazing in the right place. A great fighter for progression in the Arbiters, she can be a lich pin for gear rate 4 aka gear dungeon one love velcra and she has an extra range added to her when you get her awaken one so i need to note that as well all right zilla two uh, as we love here's our girl zilla two she can seem underwhelming but with solid attack a powerful ultimate bonus true damage can be a machine she can be a machine this is shown best with it Infernal Lord, where her damage seems to skyrocket, but without one, Zilla 2 is hard to, still hard to beat. As a favorite of many, it's easy to see why. Plus, she targets flyers, making her stand out from the crowd. Yeah, she's just she's the OG guild boss queen, <laughs> and she still obviously is up there. All right, Areka. Whilst only being a good ranged fighter, Areka's Lord skill can make piercer teams obscene. Her own damage is hampered by her limited base attack, but with Spider Toxin and her AoE Poison, she can still do some very nice things. She may not be the best fighter, but if you're running any piercers, she should probably be on your team. Again, unless you have Iovar, she's still the top tier option. All right, now Cerberus is a really cool hero. As you can see, he notes that he's very strong for gear raid 1 which is definitely the case, as well as the Faction Trials, Conqueror Codex, um, and also the, where is it, the AoE Arena, I use him for heavily as well. Really, really cool hero. A strange hero that can be hard to work with, because he does kind of sacrifice as well, like the Chaotic Faction is a little bit quirky, but really, really good. So, he's an odd hero, exactly, he's odd, the first thing he says. He has a very low cost, but is intent on killing himself whilst drowning enemies in AoE high AoE damage. His ultimate gives him suitable or sizable damage increase with, when timed with his death can push the damage through the roof. On top of this, he also is great with, his, with both of his factions, making it the most, making the most of the chaotic damage buff or providing some AoE slows at a 1. Though niche, Cerberus deletes large groups on his own, making him surprisingly useful if you can keep him alive. So you'll see people using like Lunar uh, Lunacy Visor artifact on him. To, I don't think he shows that here, no. But yeah, that's um, definitely something you want to put on this character. All right, so also in this grouping, we had a few more. So Falsia was limited. You don't have the limited heroes, of course, as well. Like I, That's why I skipped over Lust. All right, Absin is one of the weaker options, of course, that you'd want to pull. Ab Absin and I guess Abomination, although Abomination can be quite strong. Not as exciting. So Absin, whilst he doesn't seem bad on paper against anything, but Flyers, Absin usually comes up short. Flying targets are his thing. And for that, he can be a great choice. But there are very few places for him to shine until his A1, his damage can be lackluster. He isn't bad, but he's specialized and outclassed by almost every other ranged fighter. So keep that in mind. He is really good for gear raid 3. Like if you're looking to push in gear raid 3, he can be the guy in the front line that's helping to clear as things come in. 
the same way like I use Araka, if you've seen my video on my clear for 3-21, he's really strong for the faction trials as well as he has here. And yeah, I guess it's kind of, again, a specialized thing, but at least he can hit ranged targets as a fighter, so pretty nice. All right, we also have Kaneza as part of this group. Oh, let's actually go up to Abomination because we went alphabetical, so I'm going to go here. So Abomination is the one of the OG heroes as well. He is the fusion, so pull it, again, pulling a fusion here would not be ideal. That would suck. But all right, with the health of a tank and a chunky attack stat, Abomination's built to last. His abilities may lack the upfront damage of other fighters, but instead he has a multi-use invulnerability. Increasing damage and a consistent AoE burn, meaning he can be made both tanky enough to survive most situations while still putting out good DPS. He also gains a stun with awakenings, making him even better when you need a little crowd control. A good survivable fighter who can be used almost anywhere. It is true, he is so good to be versatile as a tank or as a fighter. So when you just need to stall enemies but also kill them, he's just really good. He's also really good in the new Codex that has come out, the Conqueror Codex. He's really strong for, I think he deserves a little bit more than an A plus there. I see him with top tier damage. I would certainly give him a solid S at least personally. But yeah, really good hero for that. Decent for Guild Wars as well because he pairs really well to again survive and do damage with the Nightmare Faction. So really, really good for the Guild War. And he is solid in most areas. Like it's kind of, He's probably a little underrated because he's the free hero, but he's still really great and no one should underestimate using him in content. All right, Kaneza here. She has the bond pair with Salazar, of course. All right, let's see here. Uh, Kaneza has some potential, but her chi mechanic is underwhelming. And as it's used with a fast automatic ultimate, it's hard to reach the uh, stack size where it has a real benefit. Her bond skill with Salazar does give her a little damage boost, but she isn't she isn't awful, and her two hits per attack can be useful. Her core mechanic just needs some work. Yeah, I think she's one of the worst fighters personally. She can be built to do some damage, but it's not top tier, like he says. And the whole idea with giving her a shit ton of attack speed and building up her chi mechanic stuff, it just didn't really seem to translate the way it's intended so i personally don't like this hero but i know some people do i did not like using her anywhere all right magmus is our newest hero so he doesn't have a blurb on him here i personally haven't used him so i'm not going to comment on him because i feel guilty if i gave my opinion without honestly doing any testing or looking at him he kind of came out among the time when i was giving birth I think it was, or when I was still in the hospital, right after, I don't know, but I have no knowledge of this hero except for people saying he's really cool looking, but they don't love him and they think he's underwhelming. So we'll see what Fastidious says on his website here soon enough. I'm sure he will update that one once we've got more feedback from multiple players. Feel free to comment below what you think of Magmus in case others are watching the comments section. I'm just going to be an honest content creator and not give an opinion if I don't think I can give a real one. Fair enough, right? Um, that's what you got to do. All right, we have Salazar as well. I've been using Salazar quite a bit. I almost have him Awakened 5, which is really exciting now. He's a very cool hero. Definitely has some fu a fun ultimate range with his attack. But he's really great uh, for anything with damage over time or... He's good for Arena, he's good for Guild Boss, he's good for a lot of content, honestly. Definitely use him a lot in Void Rift. He's just cool. All right, a powerful bleed hero with damage immunity tied to his ult and self-healing via crits. Salazar is a staple in any bleed composition whilst also providing solid burst damage to multiple targets at once. He comes in short in some areas but is an all-around fighter and is usually great. You can't really can't go wrong with this guy. He's a strong fighter, nice survivability, and a good bleed source, but some others do more. All right, simple enough. Let's move on. He's, he is great. He's an OG. I still use Salazar quite a bit myself. All right, was that it? Was that the only ones? I think we covered them all. Oh, my goodness. I think we covered them all that are part of that card. All right, guys, so... Honestly, the reality is 90% of these fighters are great. 
okay, not 90, whatever the percentage is that are on this card. I would say Kaneza and Absent, I would agree, are probably, let's see, at the worst. Magnus, I don't know. Yep, Kaneza and Absent, he puts as the lowest ranked. But I know some people really like Kaneza. Let's see, he has her as A plus for AMR. Personally, I tried to use her in AMR. And she was just so much worse than some of the previous people I had tried to be 18 with on the test server. It just wasn't exciting. But again, A+, plus, not an S. Single target arena, okay for. And yeah, okay for faction trials as well. But that's about it. Maybe in the future, there'll be something right for her. Or maybe she'll get a buff. And again, Absent, I think, has a little bit more utility. Like I said, faction trials, really strong. Guild Wars, pretty okay and he puts her in at um gary three he's really strong for as well um but yeah there's definitely people that outshine those two i think it's a decent pack though guys what do you think i think it's worth the risk if you need more fighters and you're lacking some of the key ones like if you're missing um uh, i don't know valeria and zilla two or arrogance like maybe those ones maybe Maybe you really want Cerberus for Arena or something. I think it's kind of worth the risk. I, I really do. Or especially if you don't have a legendary Piercer Lord trying to get Araka is good. But if you if you have most of them and you're just looking for like one, like, okay, I have everybody except Arrogance. Would I buy this bundle? No, personally, I would not. But if you're missing a bunch of them or if you're a newer player and you're willing to spend getting a couple solid legendary fighters can definitely push your account forward so i really think this is cool i think this is worth it especially because it adds this 20 uh, 2000 diamonds it helps take the value of this card to a more reasonable level so i think it's cool i like when they do these kind of packs let me know if you guys do in the comments below and i'll see you in the next video